Greetings and welcome to The Contracting Guy. I am The Contracting Guy. Today, I want to talk to you about requirements. It's important to recognize that whenever you're getting something, you have requirements. You know what they are. I need milk, I need coffee, I need whatever the requirements are. You, you have them. Well, it's the same thing in federal procurement. You have requirements. Those requirements must be met so that you could be at least competitive and then they have to be evaluated to determine you know, who's going to win. Now, recently I was on a quest to look for a freezer. Freezer was having some problems. So I uh, saw a need to, we have to get a new freezer. Now, so that said, so we're talking about household appliances and things of that nature. I said, it's no different. I mean, frankly, no different than a government evaluation. And given the fact that's what I do, um, I thought I would employ some of these practices. So I'm, I'm looking at our requirement. I have a requirement for a freezer to be used in a garage, uh, in a uh, uh, garage that has very little insulation. And it's uh, the, the electricity is 120 volt. And uh, the space is, the footprint of this uh, space is maybe four by four where this would go in. So that's kind of the parameters for um, space, sort of the form, fit, and function. So I'm looking at a, uh, an upright freezer. And in this upright freezer, um, I'm looking at uh, something that's 14 to 19 cubic feet. It must have a temperature alarm audible, must have that alarm, it must be what's called garage ready. Since it's going to be in the garage all the time, uh, there's some special features that a garage ready freezer has that a normal freezer wouldn't. So if my, free, if my garage was uh, insulated, it would need to be garage ready. But since it's not insulated, it needs to have that protection. So garage ready is a must. It needs to be frost free because my wife said it needed to be frost free. So it's a customer focused requirement. Uh, Jim Phillips doesn't particularly care. The contracting guy has even less care, but I do have a care for the customer. The customer is my wife. She said that's what I want. The next was uh, when is it available? Well, it would be soonest availability. That would be a consideration. Delivery, they would deliver either free or at some nominal, nominal fee, and then they would pick up the old one. So that's part of the deal. Said you take, you bring one, you take one. And through market research, it determined that it was somewhere between 800 and 999. Yeah, 800 to 1,000. That's the window of prices we're looking at for something like this. Now, color is not a consideration for decision-making. I mean, there is a preference toward white versus a brush steel finish. So we're looking at a variety of different things, going to Lowe's, Home Depot, um, Menards up here in the Midwest, as well as uh, ABC Warehouse and Appliance Center, which all sell these kind of things. Even took a look at Costco and, and Sam's Club to see if they can fit our model. Now, and I'll show you this grid right here I point to, that'll show you kind of the, the uh, scoring matrix that I use to be able to look at these things. But what the scoring matrix doesn't do, but it's very important, is look at past performance. This might be all the tangible stuff, but a past performance. We looked at, uh, we've purchased from Lowe's and Home Depot before, as well as Menards, but we have not evaluated the past performance in this requirement. One of the areas that we looked at was a, a, re, a past performance that was uh, almost a third party. It was my in-laws they used a particular company to do this. They bought all their appliances from that company. So that weighed a lot because we've 
were not familiar with the greater Toledo area. So they, what they said was important. Even though they have passed away, their memory lingers on through our selection process. So I wanted to point that, you know, sometimes you take comments from other areas, whether it be a website or a uh, uh, reflection on uh, social media or something, and you say, oh, that, okay, makes sense. Personal experience does drive decisions as well. So if you have personal experience or a reliable, you know, second personal experience, good, use that, consider that. So, it, um, so in making our decision, using the scoring matrix that I pointed out over here, we came up with a solution. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the solution is. You you know, come on over to the house and you'll, you'll take a look at it. But what I did find is something that met, the, met this requirement. And for you as a uh, government person, you know, you should have your uh, customer identify what the requirements are. Very simply put it this way, so that decisions can be almost checkmarked what they need to be done. Evaluation factors do this for you in many respects. They said, okay, do they meet it or they don't? So a scoring matrix is very helpful, particularly when you're looking at um, maybe best value. Certainly, uh, a firm fixed price contracts under the best value arena, where price is not your determining sole factor, you're going to be looking at other characteristics, such as in this instance here, you look at, well, maybe the cubic feet is at 14, but I get a lower price. Well, if you have one at, let's say, 17, cubic feet, and it's still at a reasonable lower price, well, maybe you could create some sort of parametric on price per cubic foot. Now, that's, again, ballpark stuff, and it's a parametric, but it is something you could uh, apply to your scoring matrix. Now, that, that's the sort of the takeaway today, is that consider creating scoring matrices so that you can evaluate the choices made available to you based on the requirements that you have articulated. If you include an art, a uh, requirement afterwards, frankly, that would be just bad, bad stuff because you, you have now introduced another requirement and you've effectively made all the other uh, submissions kind of void because they can't meet that requirement. They did not know. So you need to articulate your requirements early. For those who uh, small business is responding, best thing to do is to take a look at the, what the requirements are. If they are unclear, you need to ask for clarification. So, um, you know, if you have an alarm is in question, you say, what kind of alarm is it? Is it a heat alarm or a door or jar alarm? Which, what is it you're looking for? Is it, um, you know, if it's frost-free and he says, well, it's, it's like frost-free, you know, it's a, you know, self defrosting. Is that frost-free? Well, you know, the, the, you would ask questions that kind of drive what you're asking for. Because as a small business, you want to be able to answer the question. Now, there's one more thing I want to share with you. Absolutely important. It's not on the scoring matrix but it's absolutely important, is this. You sell the government a product. Let's say in this case, a, uh, a freezer. Something happens to the freezer after the sale. What happens? Well, you know, oftentimes it's, well, what's the manufacturer warranty? Oftentimes that's actually very dissatisfying as a response because if something has to happen and I try to contact the, the manufacturer and I get no response, I'm going to be pretty ticked off at you for selling me this dog thing. You've got to grab onto this and say, okay, this is how we support you after the sale is done. Now, that's important because in the end, I don't want to, as a contracting guy, I don't want to have any grief. For my customer, because they said, ah, you know, the thing doesn't work. It's, you know, it's a piece of crap. I think uh, we should have gone to someone else. Well, is that the attitude you want to have about your business being said by the government? 
or are you going to be helpful to solve these problems as they come out? Now, we hope for no problems, but if they do happen, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So take a look at this, this matrix and think about not only what it says, but also looking at what are the evaluation factors that would be considered? And also, uh, what do you do after the sale? Those are important. This is the Contracting Guy. I'm out. Contracting Guy here. Thank you for watching the video and thank you for being part of the Contracting Guy family. If you would, support the, uh, the channel by like, subscribe, and share with others. That would be wonderful. This is the contracting guy. I'm out.